aliens. You either believe in them or you don't. Some claim that the possibilities of the universe are so expansive that it would be illogical to say that they don't exist. But the closest we've probably ever gotten to discovering whether extraterrestrials exist are sightings of UFOs or, more formally, unidentified flying objects. While the pop culture's fascination with all things alien may feel like a fairly recent development, there's actually a much longer history of human observations of UFOs than you might think. Close your eyes and try to picture a UFO. Are you imagining a silvery flying saucer? Or maybe an ultra-modern ship with blinking lights and clouds of smoke? Or even a drone? What about a Roman chariot or a zeppelin? When we look at history, we find that reports of unidentified flying objects often have descriptions that match the tools and technology of the time. Take, for example, ancient Rome. One of the great things about the Romans being great record keepers is that we actually have evidence of what experts speculate may be UFO sightings. Of course, many of the occurrences documented by ancient Romans are easily explained today with modern scientific knowledge of astronomy and atmospheric occurrences. However, there are some remaining records which aren't easily explained. Around the third century BCE and onward, there were reports of objects in the sky that resembled items the army would have used at the time, like metal shields and spears, even ships or fleets. In one instance in 74 BCE, the armies of Rome and Pontus were about to engage with one another when a large object shaped like a wine jar burst from the sky and fell between the two warring sides. It was said to be molten silver in color and was likely quite large as it was seen from a distance. The report of the event is given credibility as thousands must have witnessed it. While your first thought might be that this was obviously a meteor, that's highly unlikely as Phrygia, the area in which this took place, was known for its meteorite worship. Then, in 65 CE, a miraculous phenomenon occurred over Judea. The historian Josephus described chariots and armed battalions were seen going through the clouds before sunset. Josephus notes himself that the event seemed illogical, but there were numerous eyewitnesses to the events. In 214 BCE, there's a report of an incident which could be categorized as a close encounter as an altar with men dressed in shining white was seen in the sky in Hadria. This encounter gives us eerily similar vibes to modern perceptions of UFO occupants watching and observing humans. Fast forward 2,000 years to the 1890s and we get sightings which incorporate the latest of technological advances in a post-industrial revolution world. There are sightings of airships in the sky, marking what might be the first modern reports of UFOs. In 1896, newspapers in the U.S. reported sightings of airships in the sky. Reflecting the cutting-edge technology of the times, some witnesses report seeing things like steam engines, screw propellers, wings, and searchlights on the airships. While an actual airship was first successfully propelled in 1852, these sightings happened several years before the Wright brothers achieved first flight. In 1897, a very famous UFO encounter occurred in Texas. A reporter for the Dallas Morning News reported that the crash of an aircraft was witnessed by dozens of people. The craft was metallic, and the witnesses also found a dead alien at the site. It was later revealed that the story was a hoax and a publicity stunt to drive tourism in the town after researchers were unable to locate any of the alleged witnesses. This probably makes it one of the earliest UFO hoaxes. The concept of flying saucers dates back to 1947 when Kenneth Arnold, an amateur pilot and businessman, was telling a reporter about seeing nine unidentified flying objects in the sky. On June 24th, 1947, Arnold was looking for a Marine Corps plane which had recently crashed in the area near Mount Rainier. He was flying over Mineral Washington 
when he noticed a bright bluish flash of light in the sky. He equated it to when sunlight reflects off of a mirror. Arnold initially thought it was just another plane in the area, but the only plane he could spot was not flashing. Moments later, the flash happened again, nine times. What he saw next, and how he would describe it, would change the world's concept of UFOs forever. According to Arnold, the unidentified flying objects appear to be flying in an echelon formation in a singular horizontal plane, moving in unison. They weaved, banked, and even flipped as they flew. The nine aircrafts covered a spread of what Arnold calculated to be five miles. Arnold went through different possibilities of what it could be. Commercial planes, geese, or military testing. He calculated how fast the objects were flying by measuring how long it took them to travel the 50 miles between Mount Rainier and Mount Adams. It took the aircrafts an astonishing 1 minute and 42 seconds, meaning they were traveling at more than twice the sound barrier at 1,700 miles per hour, according to his estimations. In the human world, the sound barrier wouldn't be broken for another four months. Arnold told friends of his at the airfield where he landed, and soon the information spread and reporters were informed of this bizarre event. The reporting would have an incredible impact on the world, but Arnold would contest the accuracy of the reporting, which flooded newspapers around the country. Arnold had actually described the flying objects as being boomerang-shaped, and the object's movements as like a saucer if you skip it across the water. However, somewhere down the grapevine, Arnold's words were twisted and the term flying saucers began to appear in articles. Arnold would even do an interview with famed journalist Edward R. Murrow about the infamous misquote that's had an incredible impact on our pop culture and beyond. Arnold would tell Murrow, they said I said they were saucer-like. I said they flew in a saucer-like fashion. After this historic misquote, the country's concept of UFOs and unknown visitors seemed to lean heavily on the flying saucer idea, with hundreds of reports of unidentified flying disks being recorded in the following years. The image newspapers erroneously painted from Arnold's eyewitness account would go on to be synonymous with aliens and UFOs in American pop culture. This event occurred just days before Roswell. On July 7th, 1947, W.W. W. Mac Brazel, a rancher in New Mexico, contacted law enforcement after finding a wreckage on a sheep ranch belonging to J.B. Foster near Roswell the month before. Hearing stories of flying saucers, Brazel reached out to officials, thinking he might have found something similar. In the wreckage, he had found sticks, rubber strips, tin foil, and rather tough paper. The sheriff wasn't sure what to make of this discovery and reached out to Colonel Butch Blanchard at the Roswell Army Field for his input. An intelligence officer, Major Jesse Marcel, was sent to investigate, and Blanchard would authorize a press release based on the findings that stated they believed a flying saucer had been found. However, the excitement was short-lived as Blanchard had also informed General Roger W. Ramey in Fort Worth, Texas of the discovery. After the debris was sent to Ramey on his orders, it was determined that it was not a flying saucer at all, but a weather balloon, which was confirmed by a weather officer. Ramey called in the press to allow them to view and photograph the weather balloon, and then put out another press release, which corrected the initial error. Headlines noted Brazel's embarrassment for being involved in the story. That was the legacy of the Roswell case for years. In the following decades, people's interest in extraterrestrials and UFOs continued to grow and entered the zeitgeist. With it came conspiracies of government cover-ups. In the late 1970s, the intelligence officer sent to inspect the debris, Major Jesse Marcel, reportedly gave an interview to UFO researcher Stanton Friedman stating that he believed what he saw that day came
came from an alien spacecraft. Each state years later, all I could do was keep my mouth shut. And General Ramey is the one who told the newsman what it was and to forget about it. It was nothing more than a weather observation balloon. Of course, we both knew differently. Upon Marcel's recommendation to interview other witnesses to the incident, Friedman concluded from his investigation that the Roswell incident was part of a massive government cover-up. Around the same time, a book called The Roswell Incident was published, detailing events from people who claimed to be first or second-hand witnesses. Believers across the country were galvanized, and the Roswell conspiracy was cemented in the public's mind. People began to theorize that the government had sealed off the crash site and took all the wreckage, including alien life forms, to be analyzed. It's commonly believed that they were taken to what is now known as Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio to be examined. Some with access to the base have even claimed to have seen evidence of aliens there. There are also theories that the wreckage and aliens were taken to Area 51, a place now synonymous with UFOs. But while these suspicions remain conspiracy theories, there actually was one government cover-up when it came to Roswell. The weather balloon was actually a part of top secret Project Mogul. Unfortunately, it had nothing to do with UFOs and more to do with spies. The project was used to test if an airborne monitoring system attached to a weather balloon could detect if the Soviets were conducting nuclear tests. Balloons were launched at several locations, including from what is now Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico during the summer of 1947. As the tensions of the Cold War were bubbling up, you can see why the government didn't want to clarify the Roswell incident by publicly announcing an espionage project. Presumably, as a result of the influx of prominent claims of UFOs at the time, the government created Project Blue Book in 1947, which was run by the United States Air Force. This project was to investigate reports of UFO sightings. In fact, the term unidentified flying object came from this project when Captain Edward Ruppelt coined it in 1950 as a replacement for flying saucer. In total, over 12,000 sightings were investigated by the project. And while over 11,000 were easily explained, there were 701 incidents that remained unidentifiable. The project came to an end in 1969, but it would not be the government's last investigation into UFOs. In 2007, the government launched the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, which operated out of the Pentagon Sea Ring. The head of the program, Luis Elizondo, claimed that it was so secretive that there were people in the Pentagon who were unaware of its existence. According to Elizondo, the mission of the program was to investigate detection or eyewitness sightings of unknown items, identify them, and then ascertain and determine if that information is a potential threat to national security. According to Elizondo, sightings often took place near nuclear facilities. A previous director of the program noted in a briefing summary that what was considered science fiction is now science fact, and that some of the technology discovered by the program would leave the U.S. utterly defenseless against it. According to the government, the program was shuttered in 2012. However, since its official closing, program supporters say that the officials that worked on the project continue their work in investigations on top of their other assigned tasks in the Defense Department. In December 2017, 10 years after the creation of the program, the Pentagon publicly acknowledged the existence of the program for the first time after questioning from the New York Times. In 2017 and 2018, the New York Times and To The Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences also published three Navy videos which drew new speculation about UFOs and what the government wasn't telling us about them. In fact, the Pentagon wouldn't even officially release them until 2020 when they finally confirmed the videos were real. The videos, recorded in 2004 and 2015, 
show UFOs, or what the government now calls UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, fly off both the West and East Coast. The three videos are called FLIR-1, aka the Nimitz Incident, Gimbal, and Go Fast. FLIR-1 occurred on November 14, 2004, about 100 miles off the coast of San Diego. Two Navy pilots from the USS Nimitz, an aircraft carrier, were executing a routine exercise when they were radioed by the neighboring ship, the USS Princeton. The operator asked if they had any weapons on board and informed them that they had noticed an unidentified object for two weeks. According to the operator, the object would appear out of nowhere around 80,000 feet, dive to about 20,000 feet, hover, and then it would disappear from radar or shoot back upwards. That object was once again appearing on the radar and the Princeton asked them to investigate. As the two made their way to the aircraft, they got so close to it that the radars on the ship could no longer tell the difference between them and the object flying. However, the pilots and their radars detected nothing. At that point, one of the pilots looked down at the ocean and saw a disturbance in the water. Something just barely submerged made it appear as if the water was sort of boiling. Above that, he noticed an oval-shaped hovering aircraft resembling a tic-tac just 50 feet above the water, measuring about 40 feet in length, which seemed to be moving irregularly over the water in all directions. The pilot started to descend in a circular motion towards the mysterious aircraft, but it began to ascend. When he tried to go directly toward the object, it accelerated like nothing I've ever seen. It was gone. The Princeton instructed the pilots to make their way 60 miles to a meetup point, known as the Cap Point. Moments later, the Princeton radioed to tell the pilots, Sir, you won't believe it, but that thing is at your Cap Point. The aircraft had reappeared on the radar, but the two pilots were still over 40 miles from the point. The object disappeared before the pilots were able to reach it. Upon his return to the USS Nimitz, one of the pilots was the butt of jokes aboard the ship as news of his encounter had made its way around. He told another pilot, curious about what he had seen, I have no idea what I saw. It had no plumes, wings, or rotors and outran our F-18s. I want to fly one. Those ranking higher than the intrigued did not investigate the incident further. The Gimbal and GoFast videos are said to have been recorded in early 2015, capturing a phenomenon pilots have been witnessing for months. Navy pilots aboard the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt began noticing unidentified objects during training flights in the summer of 2014 off the eastern coast of the United States from Virginia to Florida. Pilots began noticing the objects after their radars were upgraded from the previous systems from the 1980s. The objects initially only appeared on their radars. Because the pilots should have been able to see them with their own eyes, but couldn't, they assumed they were false tracks at first. Then they speculated that it must have been a classified drone program. The objects they observed were capable of incredible feats, like flying for hours on end at altitudes ranging from sea level to 30,000 feet and at hypersonic speeds. The pilots also noted that the objects could make sudden stops and sharp turns from those high speeds, an action that would likely kill any human on board. According to five pilots who've spoken of the sightings, the U.S. has the capabilities to do most of these things, but not all in one aircraft, and not without any sort of visible engine or even an exhaust plume visible via infrared. Eventually, the pilots began to see them with their own eyes. However, the first time they did see one, it was up close and personal. One pilot reported having a near miss as an object flew between his plane and another flying in tandem, just 100 feet away. The pilot said it looked like a cube encased by a sphere. 
The pilots reported the incident as it was now a safety issue, but the sightings gradually stopped as the Roosevelt left the coast of the U.S. for its mission in Iraq and Syria. The gimbal video is said to have recorded one of these objects off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida on January 20th, 2015. Go Fast was recorded a few weeks afterwards. Oh my gosh. We're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I think, dude. That's not our LNS though, is it? It's not. That is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's a like thing, it's rotating. There's never been a definitive explanation as to what these pilots could have encountered, but the fact that such official government videos exist has definitely excited the general public, and we're all waiting for what's next. In 2020, the Department of Defense announced a new task force which is aimed at investigating and understanding UAPs. While human civilizations continue to look to the skies for confirmation of intelligent life elsewhere in the universe, it's clear that the skies have been a source of wonder, mystery, and UFOs for thousands of years. Perhaps there are others out there observing us, trying to make contact. But until then, we'll keep watching the skies and hoping to spot a UFO. But hey, who wants to visit Earth right now anyway, right?